Welcome to this week's Midweek Update. Hey Mepham, welcome back to the Midweek Update. I am so happy to be back as one of your hosts again this year. Me too. I'm so grateful that I got upgraded from segment host to one of the main hosts. Well, I couldn't have asked for a better co-host to start off my year. Oh, thanks Ryan. I couldn't agree more. In the meantime, let's take a look at last week's Spirit Week, Homecoming, and a kid who got the chance to be a sportscaster. This and more as we take a look at what's going on this week on Midweek Update. I'm Jacob Sardui. And I'm Ryan Moore, and welcome back to the Midweek Update, the B&B show that brings you closer to the people and places in and around the MEPM community. Last week was a big week for us here at MEPM for so many different reasons. I am sure many of you know the main one, but there is also a reason you may not know. Our district was ranked number 66 in the nation, and number 15 in the state of New York. This is an outstanding accomplishment for all, but mainly our superintendent, Mr. Harrington. BNB's Brianna Goodman has more. I'm Brianna Goodman in front of Mepham High School. Unfortunately, I had the chance to talk to Mr. Harrington about how Belmore Merrick Central High School District is one of the highest ranked districts in the nation. When word came out, we were ecstatic. I mean, any time Belmore Merrick and all of our schools, you know, have the opportunity to be recognized at a national and state level, you know, it speaks volumes about our students, our staff, our board of education, and all the different opportunities we have. So I'm just, you know, I stand here with complete pride and just awe-inspired of the work that gets done in Belmore Merrick. Who would you like to thank for making the district as great as it is? Well, first and foremost, our Board of Education. Uh, they support all our new programs and initiatives. Um, we wouldn't be anywhere without our incredible uh, leadership team and our faculty and staff. Um, but most importantly, I want to thank the students. I mean, the students are the ones that, that get it done and they take advantage and make this a very, very special place. So we thank our students and families. Thanks, Mr. Harrington. That's it for me. Now back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Brianna. And another congratulations to you, Mr. Harrington. Another huge event for Mepham recently was Spirit Week. Jacob, you know I always love dressing up and getting to see what other people wear. Me too. And this year it was a huge success, and so many students and faculty members participated. I know my favorite day was Country vs. Country Club. I loved that one too, but mine was the day that started it all. Adam Sandler Day. You can see some costumes and other people's favorite days in last week's morning announcements on the all-new segment, Sheep on the Loose. However, you don't have to go searching back to last week right now. BNB's Maya Stone got to talk to some people who were a part of leadership to find out more. Homecoming is one of the biggest events of the school year. Students populate the stands to cheer for their football team, but the homecoming festivities don't start at the kickoff. Spear Week is the week before homecoming, where students dress up for a different theme every day. But how are the themes chosen? So every single year, I throw it out to the senior leadership class um, as student gov is really starting to, to develop. But in terms of the senior leadership class has been taking it under their wing the last couple of years. Normally, between the two classes, we throw a whole bunch of ideas out there. Um, so uh, we brainstormed in our th uh, senior leadership classes. And I think a lot of it was driven by um, like what everybody uh, likes throughout the year, like holidays or funny and like comedic stuff like Adam Sandler Day. The themes are vastly different every year when different classes get the opportunity to choose. Some prior themes were Team Beach Tuesday, Twin Day, Sweater Weather Wednesday, Career Day, and PJ Day. As I've gotten older, I feel like everyone's used to like the Pajama Day or Camo Day, but especially this year, there was a lot of new themes that I didn't even think were possible. <laughs> This year's themes were very unique and, and fun, and everyone seemed to have their favorite days. Uh, I think tomorrow's holiday, it's something that we've never done. I haven't seen other schools do it just yet, and I'm curious to see um, if students are really pushing the envelope and go, thinking outside of the box for you know tomorrow's day. Honestly, Adam Sandler Day probably the comfiest I've ever been coming to school and it was so funny seeing everyone trying to recreate his style. I love Christmas, it's my favorite holiday, uh, so I had to you know, pay homage to my favorite holiday. This year's Spirit Week was an amazing way to get people excited for the big homecoming game. For b and I'm Maya Stone. Thanks Maya. 
I never knew that the, that the senior leaders decided our Spirit Week themes. Me either, but I hope I get to be in leadership and help decide the themes in the future. I'm sure we all know what this amazing week led up to, the homecoming game. BMB's David Nee got to hear more about the exciting game. From the beginning, most people knew homecoming traditionally as an important football game. However, to some people, it's a lot more than that. I don't know if it's the same as it is now, but then it was sort of a community. It had community significance because we were getting together, we were meeting other kids, we were meeting people from the high school. It was very communal. It had high school spirit. It kind of was very bonding experience. It's a day where Belmore Merrick, and there's three days for us, it's three days where Belmore Merrick can come together as one in support of one of the three teams that are close by to us. <laughs> I think it, the younger I was, the more I kind of enjoyed it, you know? But I don't know, it, it still kind of had a nice feeling. I've kind of always been like one of those community-minded people. And then with my own kids, they went to their homecomings, you know? And as an adult, I kind of enjoyed it even more, you know? You know, it's one of the things about Americana. I think that's very Americana, very American, very nice, one of our nicest things. Homecoming, just to me, if like, it means togetherness. I mean, like, homecoming especially, like, it's in the word, you're coming home. It really is able to motivate them going into the rest of the year and, and ho having homecoming against right after your hardest game, absolutely be able to get you past that loss and get you ready for the rest of the season where the hardest football is played. <laughs> For BNB, I'm David Nee. Thanks, David. If you haven't already caught the game, you can see it along with Pep Rally on the BNB YouTube channel. I know I had fun at the game, and every game I go to is getting more and more exciting. Our teams are very busy with starting to finish off their regular season and move on to playoffs. For more on these games, here's BNB's Luke Yepes. It has been quite a while since I have covered your midweek sports. I hope everyone is excited for this packed week in our fall season of sports. Let's start off with our football team after our amazing performance at our homecoming game where we beat Long Beach 28 to 13. Where Dom Novello had 95 yards, a touchdown on the ground, a 35 yard touchdown pass, and a 95 yard kickoff return to the house. That was one special game if you ask me. Next, let's talk about our soccer teams where our boys have their playing game today at number 13 Hewlett. The boys need to win this game if they want a spot in the playoffs, and our girls have their last game home against North Shore today, too. Moving on to our volleyball teams, where our girls had their dig pink game yesterday to support breast cancer awareness, which, if you missed, you can see only on the BMB YouTube channel. The girls have a game today versus North Shore, and our boys, who won against West Hempstead on Monday, have a game today against Elmont and Friday against Levittown. Finally, our boys' badminton team beat Hempstead 7-0 on Monday. Quite the start of this week in Mepham Sports, that's all for me. I hope you all had a great homecoming weekend, and make sure you check out future episodes of Sheep on the Loose here on our Midweek Update. Now back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Luke, and I can't wait for more Sheep on the Loose. Luke is also one of our sportscasters that has been doing an incredible job so far this year. Absolutely, and we all here at BNB are so lucky to start getting real-world experiences so early. Another kid who was just a little bit younger than us also had an unforgettable experience. A little while ago, a seventh grader at Grand Avenue Middle School got the opportunity of a lifetime with the New York Mets. BNB's Matt Mano has more. Most young baseball players in New York aspire to be on the field in the orange and blue, but some aspire to be in the booth. SMY gave one lucky kid a chance, and Grand Avenue's Eddie Krause took the opportunity and ran with it. So, uh, I clicked on the link and it was probably like maybe 10.30 at night and I was like, Mom, I'm entering this contest. And she was like, can we do it tomorrow? I'm like, I'm not doing this tomorrow. I'm doing this right now or I'm never doing it. And good news arrived quickly for the Cross family. So it was very exciting. Um, I've been excited from him, for him from the second. We found out that he got it. Um, we were on a plane and we heard about it and I, I was just so excited for him because I know this is something he's wanted for so long, so. And clearly, the moment wasn't too big. Listen to this. 
Now kicks and fires. Now peeking to drive one, and it's going to get through. Shortstop Iglesias unable to grab it, and Pete Alonso is going to have himself on first with Daniel Vogelback coming up. And the support for Eddie rolled in quickly. So, um, according to Twitter, I think I did pretty good. I went from about maybe 350 followers on Twitter that day to 4,300, I think I'm at now. So, and I got retweeted by Barstool. I got retweeted by KFC Barstool, obviously. He was like, no gas, but Eddie the Kickcaster is better than Apple TV. Um, no offense to Apple TV because obviously they're good broadcasters. I don't want to, you know, call them out, but he said that. And then I was, um, Bleacher Report retweeted it and Taiwan Walker retweeted it saying this kid is awesome. Did. Amazing. I could not be more proud of him. He he was so confident and calm, cool and collected and, and he knows his stuff so he was he did great. I think he did really good. Um, I watched the whole time he did it. Uh, I think he was better than some like broadcasters I've seen before. Cause I'm sure Eddie has a bright future ahead of him. Keep an eye out for him on BNB and beyond in the future. But until then, for BNB, I'm Matt Mana. Matt, I wish I got an opportunity like that before BNB. Who knows? Eddie Krause could be a future BNB. -er. We'll just have to wait and see. Well, that's it for this week's maybe episode of Movie Update. We'll be back next week with all new stories from around the BMC HSD to bring you inside the parts of the community we always don't get to see. Until then, I'm Ryan Moore, and I'm Jacob Sardui, and we'll see you all next midweek.